Hello everyone and welcome to another Pathfinder Adventure card game scenario. Uh, we are on scenario 1.4 with the character Damiel over at the Scorched Obelisk where at this location when you succeed at a check to defeat a Bane by four or more you are dealt 1d4 electricity damage. Well so far Damiel has been doing really good. He's got some really great boons, all alchemical for the most part, so he's rolling right along. He seems like, uh, yeah, he's just on track. Let's see how he fares for this scenario. Advancing the Blessings deck, it's a Blessing of Thoth. And for our first exploration, Damiel will get a Ghost Scorpion. Okay, it's a trigger, well we did not examine. Uh, Anal Poison Basic, well Damiel has that power where he can recharge a card to add 1d6 to your check that invokes the acid or poison trait. So the question is, is do we want to? It's a combat 9. If Damiel were to just do the Scorched Obelisk is going to be a problem, the effect. If Damiel just wants to do a basic melee, he could do a melee. He would be able to recharge a card to roll a d6. But then that would be it. Looking at his hand, doesn't really have anything else going for him. Um, that's an interesting thing, whether or not he wants to do that. Uh, da, da, da. It's a, and also, he has this power where he can recharge a card that has the alchemical trait to add 1d4 and the acid or poison trait to a combat check by a character at your location. So not only, we're going to be recharging cards here. What's interesting about uh, this ability, so we're going to be using his second and last power. So we're going to recharge his acid flask so that we get an extra d4. So we're going to go ahead and do a d4 and then we're going to do a melee check and then we're going to use that power to recharge another card that has the alchemical trait. So we will go ahead and recharge this shield, scare a buckler. So this is going to be pretty interesting doing some shenanigans. We're rolling 2d4 and a d6 because we only need a 9 and we don't want to set off that scorched obelisk. So let's see what we get. Alright, so we rolled 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that worked out perfect. The Ghost Scorpion has been defeated, and we did not set off the Scorched Obelisk. Alright, and what we're going to do, we have the Alchemist's Kit in our hand. We'll go ahead and display that. It says here, while displayed, bury this card to draw 1d4 plus 1 random cards that have the alchemical trait from your discard pile. That's pretty cool because we just discarded the, um, the Scarab Buckler. So we'll put that up here as a reminder. And now we will reset Daniel's hand. Alright, so advancing the Blessings deck. It's a Blessing of Widget. We are exploring and we get the second law. So it says, display this card next to the scenario. It is defeated while displayed. When a character succeeds at a check to defeat a barrier, roll a d6. If the difficulty of the check was exceeded by that amount or more, each character at that location uh, banishes a card or someone's encounters a henchman Voices of the Spire, then banishes this card. Okay, interesting. So we have to deal with the second law now. We'll have that up there as a reminder. And uh, Damiel likes his hand. No need to explore at this stage or examine cards or explore. All right. Ex uh, advancing the Blessings deck, it's a Blessing of the Elements, and we will explore. We get an Armored Coat. It's Constitution Fortitude 5, and Damien has, or Damiel, Damiel has a Constitution of D8, so rolling D8 here, we rolled a 6, and we need a 5, okay, cool. So, uh, we do succeed in acquiring the Armored Coat, um, so since we did succeed at acquiring the Armored Coat, I think we will go ahead and we're going to go ahead and do this. We can discard this card to examine the top card of your location deck. If it is a Bane, encounter it, and it may not be evaded. Otherwise, you may encounter it. So I think we'll go ahead and use the Blessed of the Set. We're going to discard it to examine the top card of our location deck. So examining this card, it's a Blessed of Capri. So we have the option of um, exploring or encountering it. So we will go ahead and encounter the Blessing of Kepri. It's a uh, craft 7. Fortunately, Damiel has a craft of D10 plus 4. Wow. So maybe he was just meant to acquire these Blessing of Kepri cards. So D10 plus 4. Let's see what we roll. And we rolled a 5. So he does acquire the Blessing of Kepri. 
So we're going to go ahead and discard this card to explore our location. Since we're on a roll, we might as well keep it up. Exploring, and we get the Evil Eye. So we did not examine this card, fortunately. The difficulty to defeat is increased by twice the Scenario Adventure deck number, so that will be two. So that means we need to do a Stealth, Knowledge, Arcane, Divine, or Diplomacy 8 check. And all of those are really tough for uh, Damio. Uh, let's see what he has. I really don't want to get a Scourge. Scourges really stink. So we're going to use our Smokestick. We're going to display this card while displayed at 1d8 to stealth checks by characters at this location. So we're going to go ahead and use the smoke stick. So we get to roll a d8 and a d4 and normally Damiel's... I'm going to go ahead and use a Blessing of the Elements. Discard that to roll another d4. So we're going to roll 2d4 and a d8 so that we do not... so that we roll an 8 or higher. Alright, let's do it. So roll a 7 8, 9, 10. So look at that. We needed an, uh, an 8. We rolled a 10. So we do not set off the Scorched Obelisk. And we defeat that Bane. But do we do have to do this second law. So we defeated the... When we defeated Barry, roll a d6. So that means that if the difficulty of the check to exceed... Was exceeded by that amount or more. So if we roll a 4, 5, 6, unfortunately we have to encounter the henchmen of Voices of the Spire. So, let's see if we roll a 4, 5, 6. So we did roll a 5. So we don't really like that. We're going to use the Game of the Afterlife to bury this card to re-roll the die. Alright, let's go ahead and bury the card, and we're going to roll a new d6. We're going to roll a 1, 2, 3. Nope, we still rolled a 4 there. So unfortunately, we do have to encounter the Voices of the Spire. Or we have the option of banishing a card. So it says here, hmm, that's tough. We can, hmm, so we have to banish a card or, so if we banish a card, okay, you know what? We are going to banish a card. We're just going to banish this armored coat. We just got it. That's the easy way out. So sweet. Now the second law is gone. The evil eye has been defeated. Uh, the smoke stick, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. At the end of the turn, banish this card, but we'll, we, since we're the alchemist Daniel, we're just going to discard that card. All right, and now we have the option. So we have two, no, we just have, we just have one card in our, we just have one card in our discard pile with the alchemist trait. So we'll keep the alchemist kit for now. All right, so we're going to reset Daniel's hand. All right, and now what we're going to do is we're going to advance the Blessings deck. It's a Blessing of Widget. We will explore. We get a Camel. So unfortunately, unless Damiel... So his Wisdom and Survival is, are both D4. Actually, no, his Wisdom is a D6. So, But unless he wants to spend a, a Blessing, this is going to be an auto-fail. So we will go ahead and forget the Camel is banished. The Boon is not acquired. Looking at the Hand... Daniel's hand is fine. We will advance the Blessings deck, and unfortunately we get the Curse of Vulnerability. And we're going to be stuck with that since we got rid of our Game of the Afterlife. So we have a Curse of Vulnerability, and now we're going to uh, explore. We get a Fire Kukuri, Strength, Melee, Dexterity, Ranged. Well, Daniel does have a Dexterity of D10. So we'll just go ahead and roll for the Dexterity check. Actually, his Ranged is Dexterity plus 2. So, D10 plus 2, we rolled a 4, 5, 6. Alright, pretty sweet. We do acquire the Fire Kukuri. So, what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and keep that in our hand. We're going to toss a Noxious Bomb. Alright, things are going right along. Advancing the Blessings deck. It's a Blessing of the Ancients. And we will explore. And we get the Villain. So, it says, Before you act, each character at this location summons and encounters the henchman Grave and Guardian of Nethys. So it's a villain. We do have the Chakram, which, but that only stops um, a non-villain power. That happens before you act. So we can't use the Chakram. So we do have to uh, defeat the Graven Guardian of Nethys first. So it's immune to the mental and poison traits. The difficulty to defeat is increased by plus two. 
So we have to basically do a, do we have any cards with the Nethys traits? So we don't have any cards with the Nethys traits, so it's just going to go ahead and do, be a straight up combat 14. So I think we did just acquire this uh, Fire Kukuri, we might as well use it. We're going to do Strength or Melee plus 1d4, so we could basically, Damiel's Strength is just a d4. So we could do a total of 4d4 plus 1, and, but we need a total of 14, so that's really not going to work in this section. We're going to go ahead and use the cha Chakram. We're going to use our Range Skill plus 1d8, and so it's going to be Range Skill, which is d10 plus a d8. Then what we're going to do is we will use the Fire Kukuri, and if you played another weapon, we're going to discard this card to add another 1d4. So we're rolling these dice. What's cool is we just have to reveal this card. We don't have to discard it. So we're just revealing it. But we are discarding the Fire Kukuri. And we're going to roll these three dice, and we're adding two to the result. All right, let's see what we get. So we rolled, uh, that was a two. So five, six, seven. Uh, and we needed a 14. So that means that we fail. Uh, we can use the Anktep's armor. So it says here to do, 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 bury this card to reduce combat damage to zero. We are proficient with light armor, so we're just good to discard it instead. So that means that the Graydon, we did fail to defeat this guy, but I'm pretty sure we still have to uh, battle Merit Ekphronosin. So it says if undefeated, we suffer Scourge. Examine all the cards in the location deck, then shuffle your location deck. Wow. Then he is evaded. Okay, so first things first. So we failed to defeat the Graven Guardian, so we suffer a Scourge. Uh, the Scourge die for level 1. I believe it's just a d4, but I'm just checking the Scourge table right now. So a Scourge table for scenario 1 is 1d4 plus 1. So we're going to see which Scourge Damiel acquires. It's 3 plus 1, it's 4. So Damiel acquires the Curse of Daybane. So not only does he have the Curse of Vulnerability, but he has the Curse of Daybane. So let me go ahead and grab that Scourge. So, do 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 do, it's right here. Huh, I thought I had it out. There it is. So Damiel has a Curse of Daybane right now and a Curse of Vulnerability. What happens now is that we have to examine all the cards in your location deck. There's only two left, so we examine that, and since we examine it, we have to. it has a trigger trait. So we do need to encounter that right now. Uh, when you examine this card and counter it, the difficulty to defeat is increased by three. So that means we have to do two combat 12 checks. So for the first combat check, we'll go ahead and use a Noxious Bomb. It's just going to be uh, Dexterity Range plus 2d6. So we're going to do... Actually, we're not going to do that. We don't want to set off this Scorched Obelisk. It's basically just going to be the Chakram. Reveal this card to use your Dexterity or Range plus 1d8. So Dexterity or Range. So Range plus 1d8. So we need a 9, 10, 11, 12. We're adding 2 to that roll. Um, I think we're just going to go ahead and... We will, shucks, you know what, I don't know what we should do here, because it's getting kind of tricky. We're going to go ahead and, shucks, I need to do a 12. All right, we're just going to risk it. We are just r using this. Um, we do have, what we're going to do, we're going to use Daniel's power, where we can recharge a card to add 1d6. Uh, we can recharge this card to add 1d4 to a combat check. So we're going to recharge the Noxious Bomb. We're adding a d4. So we're rolling these dice, adding 2. So we rolled a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's not enough. Uh, we fail by 2. So that means that we take 2 points of damage. And what we have to do now is we have to do the second combat check. But this time, we'll just go ahead and burn a Fire Lance. We'll discard it, roll 48. And we don't really care if we set off the 
the uh, scorched obelisk now because we're out of cards. So 48, yep. Not only do we defeat the Bone Master Hyena, but since we uh, failed the first check, he gets shuffled back into the deck. We trigger damage from the Scorched Obelisk. It doesn't matter. Well, actually, let's go ahead and do it. We're rolling. So we rolled a four. We took four points of electricity damage, so that means we can get rid of the Curse of Vulnerability. And now what's going to happen is we still have to examine all the cards in the location deck. So, we're so we examine the last card. It's a yellow jelly. Then we shuffle it and we shuffle her into the location deck. Wow. So all that for failing Merrick and Kep. So there are three cards left in the location deck. Rolling to see which card is on top. It's going to be the top card. All right, we will now reset Damiel's hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, he barely had enough cards left to live. Advancing the Blessings deck. It's a Blessing of Bastet which means that the Curse of Daybane can be avoided. But the first thing that Daniel will do is he's going to go ahead and use the Alchemist Kit. We can bury this card to draw 1d4 plus 1 random cards that have the alchemical trait. We'll definitely want to use this. So we roll the 2 plus 1 is 3. So looking at Daniel's deck, so that has the alchemical trait. Uh, this one has the alchemical trait, alchemical trait. Okay, so those are the only three cards with the alchemical trait, and he was able to shuffle three into his deck. So what we're going to do, we're burying the alchemist, alchemical, the alchemist's kit, and we're shuffling up the three cards in his... We're just shuffling these cards up, and they're going into his library or his deck. Okay, now he is all set to explore. We get the yellow jelly. So it has the ooze acid basic trait so it's immune to mental piercing poison and slashing so since it has the acid trait you may recharge a card that has the alchemical trait to add 1d4 and the acid or poison so we can do the acid trait and we can recharge a card to add 1d6 to your trick that invokes the acid or poison trait so we can just do a straight up uh, melee and we can use both of his powers. We can recharge two cards. We can add a d6 and we can recharge another card and roll a d4. Okay, so looking pretty good. So we're going to recharge that one and we will recharge this. We're recharging two potent cards. All right, so we're rolling these two dice and we are actually these three dice and we need to roll an eight. Alright, so we rolled 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we defeat the. <coughs> we. Uh, <laughs> so, the, so unfortunately, what we did is we did add. We added the acid trait. Hmm, shucks. So if the check to defeat has the acid or coal trait, add 3. So we are going to have to add 3 to that roll. That really sucks. So, we did defeat the Yellow Jelly, but we defeated it by over four. So we have to roll for Scorched Obelisk. We roll a three. Is the Scarab Buckler going to help us out? Yes. It'll stop electricity. We can recharge it. Stop electricity damage by three. Well, that was a lifesaver right there. Okay. So we got through that card. We are resetting Daniel's hand. We are going to advance the Blessings deck. It's a Blessing of the Ancients, which means that we cannot explore unless we want to spend. We cannot explore unless we want to spend a, a blessing. So that's an interesting question. We do not want to spend a blessing, but we are going to do a special exploration. So we can't do our free exploration, but we can do this exploration. We can discard this card. To explore your location. During this exploration, add two plus the scenario's adventure deck number to your combat checks. If your combat check invokes the poison or swarm trait, add another 1d4. So, yeah, sweet. Druid of the Hive is discarded. We are going to explore and we get the Bone Crusher Hyena. So, this time we don't trigger him. It's just two combat nines and we are adding plus three to this roll thanks to the 
Druid of the Hives effect. So we're adding plus three to these rolls. Pretty sweet. So I'll go ahead and use that as a reminder. There we go. So what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and figure out what we're going to do here. So Damiel can recharge a card that has the uh, he can recharge a card that has the alchemical trait to add 1d4. So if we want, he has two cards with the alchemical trait. I can do a straight up melee check and I can do a, a power for Damiel, which would allow me to roll another d4. So I would give me potentially 8, 9, 10, 11 with, um, hmm, that's pretty dicey there. Uh, let's see, do we want to do that? Yeah, what we're going to do is, not only are we going to recharge a card to use Daniel's power to add D4, and unfortunately, we are going to spend a blessing, a blessing of D4, a blessing of Horus, so that we can add another D4, because we don't want to take any chances here. We're rolling 3D4, and we're adding 3 to the first check. All right, let's see what we get. So we roll 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we make the first check. That's awesome. But we still have to do one more combat check. We're adding three to this roll. And I guess what we will do is we're just going to go ahead and blow it up with the Noxious Bomb, unfortunately. Are we going to do that? Uh, yeah, we'll do it. We're just going to blow it up with the Noxious Bomb. We can. Uh, we'll, we have to banish that card, though. If we banish that card, yep. We'll have to banish the card. Actually, you know what? Wow, that really sucks. I think what we're going to do, shucks, this is really hard. We can just do this, the, the two dice, 2d4, and add plus three. I think that's the safe bet. That's Unfortunately, that's the only bet we're going to do. We're using his melee, and we're doing his power to recharge the noxious bomb. Rolling 2d4, adding three. We need a nine. We need to roll good here. All right, so we rolled four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow. So we don't set off the Scorched Obelisk. The Bone Crusher Hyena is defeated thanks to Druid of the Hive who gets discarded. We are now resetting Damiel's hand and wouldn't you know he's got cards plus one to spare. Wow, that is amazing. Alright, advancing the Blessings deck. It's a Blessing of Kepri. There's only one card in the location deck. We know what it is. We don't have to deal with Curse of Daybane because we got the Blessing of Kepri in the discard pile of the Blessings deck. So the first order of business is to use this Scarab Buckler to bury this card to shuffle 1d4 plus 1 random cards into back into our deck. So we did 2. So we get to shuffle 3 random cards into back into our deck. So just shuffling the discard pile really quick. Let's go ahead and do three shuffles there. Then we're going to count by D6 to see which ones we get. One, so what we get the top three. So we get shuffled back into our deck. Eh, nothing too impressive. Octax Armor, Chakram, Fire Kukuri. So we shuffle those back into our deck. At least they will give us some life. All right, so we did that. And now what we're going to do is we will explore. And we get this crazy guy again. So this time, so first of all we have to go ahead and meet the Grave and Guardian. So we got, uh, well, we don't have any armor in our hand whatsoever. So we gotta do a combat 14 check. Uh, he's immune to mental and poison unfortunately. Uh, da, 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 da. Wow. So fortunately we have an acid flask so we can just discard this to use our disable or range skill plus 2d6. So range skill is d10 and we roll 2d6. All right, we're kind of banking on rolling good here. Adding two to the roll. So we rolled six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 14, 15, 16. So unfortunately, okay, it was 14. So we only defeated it by two. So we don't set off the Scorched Obelisk. Graven Guardian has been defeated. Now we have to do a Combat 14 check. And we don't care if we go all out now with the Fire Lance because that's what we're going to do. 48. 48. Let's roll high here. We still got to roll 14. 
All right, so we roll 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Wow, is that true? 8, 15, 16, 17. We only had a 14, so we only defeated it by 3. We don't set off Scorched Obelisk, and we close the location. Boom, just like that. Man, that was a real nail biter. That scenario was pretty amazing. We still had one card. Uh, we, of course, were able to reset Damiel's hand. So he had one card left in his deck. But uh, he was getting down to his last cards there. So there he is. He is a superstar tonight. He did really good. So let's go ahead now and uh, do a deck check here. Uh, we kind of did like a deck check last scenario. I don't think he acqu he acquired the armored coat, but it was awesome because he was able to banish it due to that um, second law barrier. So I'm not going to do a deck check here. I mean, uh, nothing really that much has changed. He didn't really acquire anything new. That's great. Let's go uh, straight to the rewards of the scenario. So the reward of the scenario was a card feat. So let's go ahead and zoom in here on Damiel and his card. So, this one kind of, there you go, that's a little better. So the card feat is, I think we're just going to go ahead and max him out with uh, items. I mean, he's an alchemist, he loves items. So card feat, that's a pretty, pretty much no-brainer there, what we're going to do. And what we unlock for this scenario is we unlock the Sunburst Market location. So now, Damiel can at any time just go get... Um, basic non-loot boon item that has the basic trait cost one boon so that will help him stock up on noxious bombs if he needs them but as it is let's go ahead and uh check out what damiel has i mean does he really want to trade anything he does get a new item slot so he does get that and if he resets his deck so what we're going to do is we will go ahead oh you know what he did acquire this, he did acquire a new boon. He acquired the Fire Kukuri. So what Daniel's going to do is he will go ahead and meet up his buddy Falstein Deke and say, hey Falstein, let's uh, do some trades. I mean, I got a Fire Kukuri, or however you pronounce that. Of course, one of my pet peeves, as you may know, is how I cannot pronounce any Pathfinder words, or make an attempt to do so, I should say. So let's go ahead and randomly shuffle this giant stack of items that the trader is going to offer us and I'll just roll a d10 here uh, fourth one down one two three four okay so false indeed is offering holy holy water grenade and the helpful haversack and whoo what a great item that is helpful haversack I think I was going to say yes to that at the start of your turn reveal this card to examine the top card of your deck you may additionally discard this card to add the examined card to your hand, otherwise put the examine card on the top or bottom of your deck. So very, very helpful item. We want it. We just gained an item slot so we can keep we do not the holy water grenade. That is pretty awesome. So we can evade encounter that has the outsider or undead trait. So we can actually do that to like high profile villains, right? Or we can banish this card to defeat a banyu encounter that has the outsider or undead trait and whose highest difficulty to check the defeat is 12 or lower. Pretty cool. I mean, we could have done that for the, uh, well, not the Grave and Guardian of Nethys, because his, he was a 12, but he had a plus 2 modifier. So it couldn't have used the Holy Water Grenade on the Grave and Guardian, unfortunately. So it's a cool thing, but we don't want it. So what we are going to do is we are going to tell Faustin Deke that we'll trade him the Fire Kukuri, and let's see, what else are we going to give him? Let's go ahead and zoom out here so you can see what I'm doing here. So we have to give, we're giving him the Fire Kukuri. We have to give him one other boon that we have. Did he acquire any other boons? I don't, oh, he acquired, did he acquire Blessing of Horus? Did he acquire the Chakram? Uh, let's see, he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So one of these is extra. The weapons he had were the... Let's look at his weapons really quick. He's got the Fire Lance, which he wants to keep. And... and